The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, it's all about tree care, what you should and should not be doing right now, as well as watering techniques. Our guest will be the executive gardener on YouTube, Jeff Bernhardt, and will answer your garden questions. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Welcome to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your world for the next hour. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. We appreciate you tuning in, whether you're listening to us on one of the 21 sta- uh, one of the 16 stations, 15 stations that are broadcasting our program here in 2021. Uh, radio app through our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, underneath the Season 5 tab at the top of the page. Uh, podcast replay, in-studio video replay, or wherever or however you're capturing the program, we thank you for doing such. If you would like to get a hold of us, you can certainly do that. The best two avenues to do such is to email us, uh, one being GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. That's GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. The other avenue, you can actually physically talk to us if you would like. You can put your fingers in your phone and dial us up at 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-SHOW. And if we can't get to you, please leave a message, and we will call you back with this answer to your situation or problem. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. Holly, let's get in the program, and we're going to talk about tree care today, what you should and should not be doing this time of year. Many of us, uh, there's certain projects that revolve around tree maintenance that is typically done in late winter, early spring, but many of us decide, "Mm, we'll wait on that because it's cold and there's a lot of snow on the ground, and we didn't get to those things. Well, first... You know, Arbor Day was not too long ago. Right. And so people plant trees during Arbor Day. Um, If you didn't plant a tree or you want to plant a tree, um, you want to plant the right tree. Right. But there's really no wrong time to plant a tree. It's either 10 years ago or or today. Right. There is no wrong time. But you do want to make sure you plant the right tree. This is very important. So you want to choose a species that will adapt to your climate. Well, you want to think about where you're planting that tree. And then also if it's something like a fruit tree, how big it might get, how you might pick that fruit, et cetera, care, pollination, things like that. And then if you're not sure about what type of tree to get, if you're looking for a native or deciduous, tree, excuse me, yeah, a tree that's going to work for your area or fit in, like maybe you don't want to plant a palm tree if you're in the north. Well, if you're, um, if you're going to your garden center, your independent garden yeah. center or the big box store, and you're getting a tree in a pot, they're not going to have trees in pots that don't go in the climates that you're in right. 99% of the time. If you're mail ordering, then you've got to look at that zone. They have a the little thing on the rated for zones three to six. And that's why we would say go to your local garden center, your local nursery, they, contact your local extension office. If you go to your nursery or your garden center, independent garden center, not the big box center, most of the time, those people care that you get the right product, the right time, and you they'll teach they'll, they'll instruct you how to put it in the ground, so you can be successful. Right. So that's that's very important. As much as they want that return business, if they can help you be successful the first time, you're going to go back and buy something else the next time you need something. Right. So another thing is that you want to make sure you either are staking the tree properly once you plant it. Or if somebody plants it for you, you remove the stakes. Um, you want to make sure you that it's loosely, it's loosely staked and not staked into the root ball. Um, and that's pretty much it. You want to there's you want to use loose, flexible ties. The tree needs to blow in the wind to develop a strong trunk, and that's important. So you don't want to tie that thing down like a tent in a windstorm. You want to let it be able to blow around. Well, I mean, most of these trees, you don't really necessarily have to stake them down. 
They're not radio towers. You know, they, they need that. You go, okay, you go in the woods and you see how many trees are staked down. How many gnomes well, right. have that's, staked that's trees? That's the thing you is know? that yeah. that's why, you know, remove the stakes early. It's not even necessary. I'm saying if somebody staked it Well, for true, you. true. Yeah. So another thing to keep in mind is we need to water the tree. And this is going to, whether it be a new tree, an older tree, what have you, this is something you want to start thinking about, especially if you live in an area that might have a drier climate. A lot of people think like, oh, you know, the tree has been established for so many years. But if it if it looks like, you know, you have a drought or a dry climate, you want to consider watering that tree. Now, uh, we can use the tree diaper. We'll talk more about that in the second segment here on, about watering. Uh, but other things, if you're building a small mini orchard, if you're just putting, deci- just putting pine trees in or maples or oaks or whatever the case is, uh, you want to make sure that you're protecting the trunk, whether that's mulching around it or designating an area where you're not running into it with the lawnmower trimmers if you care about your tree. Now, <clears throat> there's sometimes, you know, on the farm, you just bounced off of it and you kept moving. Uh, but that's kind of, you know, the way things work there. Um, but, A lot of people mulch around their tree right now. Right. Um, or, you know, they, ref- they refresh the mulch or whatever. So one thing you want to keep in mind is that you don't do what's called volcano mulching. And your volcano mulching is Go to any you- city park, you'll see this. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know. I think I think the cities are now catching on to this because the last time outside of my work office, the city put in trees, they did not volcano mulch. Okay. So volcano mulch is when it looks like there's a volcano of mulch around the tree, like the tree's shooting out the middle of a volcano. The mulch is straight up to the trunk and then kind of almost up the side of the trunk. You don't want to do that. That's not what you want to do. You want to mulch and then you want to make a nice perimeter around the base of the tree so that the mulch is next to the tree but not directly onto it right uh with that volcano mulching you can cause root rot you can cause a lot of damage to the tree uh let's talk about pruning in in general generally most of these trees uh you would prune i mean in most trees you would prune late winter early spring before any foliage begins to appear uh general uh rule of thumb uh, on that and if you do have to prune in the spring in the summer, you want to prune basically for two reasons and not removing more than 10% of the overall canopy. Your two reasons are pruning for safety to remove dead or dying decaying branches. Makes sense. Or you want to minimize uh, the, the branches that could be uh, uh, damaging other branches. Right. That's or, or could damage other branches. Could, and and yeah. you're shaping the tree to kind of get it in that form that you want. Uh, minimal pruning uh, for aesthetics as well. So uh, mainly that that if you if you think the tree is going to have problems dropping large things on top of people or property, you can pull those uh, limbs and uh, le- limbs out of the tree. Another thing that goes with mulching, kind of, is to keep the grass away from the tree. And that's why most people mulch around the tree, but maybe you planted a tree last fall, you never got to mulch it, and now the grass is growing where the tree, the base of the tree, you would want to mulch over that. Um, you can, you can, if you have sod, you can cut the sod away. You might have already done that to plant the tree, but you definitely want to use that mulch to keep the grass away from the tree. Now, contrary to tradition and wisdom, many experts Consider late fall is the proper time to fertilize your tree. Now, when we say late fall, we want to make sure that the growth, or your, your, the freeze has occurred, or the frost and freeze has occurred, and the tree is starting to go into dormancy. If you fertilize in early fall, the tree is still growing, and you're going to cause more growth on that tree before it goes into dormancy, which can cause more damage to those new growths than if you would just wait until you know an extra month or so. And uh, there's different fertilizers based on the type of tree. And so you need to be aware of what you're going to do there. You can fertilize um, in the spring. Not a problem. But you want to do it. You, some people will use the fertilizer stakes and put them in you know, X amount in a parameter of the, based on the canopy of the tree. Uh, you can find those. Some people will just top dress it with a granular fertilizer. Many trees do not necessarily need to be fertilized. Um, there are some that could use the benefit of fertilizing based on the 
amount the 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 goodness uh, the goody in the soil. So keep that in mind that um, you don't also want to damage the roots once the tree has either been planted or established by running heavy equipment over the areas where the roots would be at or next to the trunk. Now, where might the roots be on a tree? Look up. If you see limbs hanging over, the, the, where the canopy is is where the roots are at and probably just a little bit outside of that perimeter. Right. So you definitely don't want to... If you plant a tree or you're going to do some sort of building, you want to be aware of where those roots are before you drive a dump truck onto your land or whatever um, to help protect those roots. Now, if it's like a one one time situation when you're maybe you have to drive over the area, the base of the tree, something to get something, some sort of equipment dropped off. It's not the end of the world, but you don't want to keep driving over where the roots could be. And when we talk about fruit trees in this aspect, you there's you can have fruit trees, plant them, and they can get 30, 40 feet tall and 20 or 30 feet wide. Um, if that's the goal in which to harvest as much produce, whether it's apples or um, pears, it's not good when these things fall from 30 feet in the air. You can shape these. You, yeah. can, you can shape the trees. You're going to get less production, but better quality production. But that's on the, what yeah. people in orchards do. Right. They, they shape them. I mean, obviously, they have a lot more trees. Well, but back where I'm from, them. we drive by that orchard, you know, I, and I say, well, that used to be an orchard, and these trees are uh, almost 60 foot tall, yeah. and just it's now a forest that used to be a very thriving peach and apple and pear uh, orchard. It just went, you know, to nothing. One thing to keep in mind is protecting that tree. So if you... I know um, over time, nature changes, your natural landscape changes. You might have deer that are now trying to eat the bark of your tree. I know mm -hmm. I was just hiking in a state park, and these deer are now eating these cedar trees more prolifically. So <coughs> you want to um, you want to make sure that if you do notice like a deer or wildlife is eating the tree, maybe put some chicken wire on the base to help prevent that. Uh, you can also use Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard uh, paint. Uh, oh, yeah, for the tree, the I also use deer defeat uh, spray uh, accordingly to the instructions. Deer defeat, uh, all natural deer, rabbit, and groundhog repellent. Coupon code radio to save 10% on your order. That works very effectively as well. So uh, we want to protect the trees. Uh, plant one today if you didn't plant one 10 years ago. And be mindful of where you're planting it. As we wrap this up, look up, make sure there's proper distance between you the, where the tree is and what may be it whether it's a barn a shed power lines we want to be aware of this and we also want to call diggers hotline before we start digging to make sure we're not going to hit any uh, underground utilities that can cause bigger problems not only for you but for other people uh speaking about you and other people do you like to eat uh the pro the the animals in which you harvest off your uh off your land off your farm off your homestead, or you just want good seasonings to impress those who come over for barbecues or uh, meals, Walton's Incorporated can fix and uh, surpass all of your needs when it comes to those items. Yeah, the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you today by Walton's Inc. Uh, we know you care about where your food comes from. You can get all of the equipment for making sausage, jerky, meat sticks, what have you, that includes the spices, that includes the flavoring, that includes everything from grinders, mixers, uh, sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. You go to waltonsinc.com. And if you go to meatgistics.com, there's uh, there's hows and whys of how meat processing, as well as a community of over 15,000 users who will help give their opinion and guidance on meat processing issues. So it's meatgistics.com or waltonsinc.com. A uh, good place to get the items so you know what's in the food that you're eating. Well, do not go anywhere. Hang around. We're going to talk about watering. Uh, seems like a simple topic, but we're going to get in some deep, dark uh, techniques here that's important to make sure your plants don't suffer this growing season. You're listening to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com.
We here at the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show Gardens understand that healthy soil is the key to a successful garden. We know that chemical fertilizer burns carbon out of the soil and kills the microbes needed for a healthy soil ecosystem. No worries. Chicken Soup for the Soil by Dr. Jims will stimulate life into your soil, supplying all the nutrients most fertilizers neglect. Rather than force-feeding water-soluble chemical fertilizer, we suggest feeding the microbes a smorgasbord of 100% biodegradable nutrients that your plants can consume when they need them. The nutrients are readily available to maximize their genetic potential. Chicken Soup for the Soil will increase the quality of the fruit and vegetables you grow. Visit drjims.com. That's dr. J-I-M-Z dot com. Chip Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, Chip Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ChipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called internal wood stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on internal wood stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, internal wood stabilizer. Check it out at timberprocoatingsusa.com. This week's garden tip is brought to you by Yard Glider, the cart without wheels, loads without lifting, hauls more, dumps faster, built to last, and built for hard work. Multiple sizes available at yardglider.com. That's yardglider.com. Thinning your seedlings is key. Once the plants are two to four inches tall, you would want to remove plants that are too close to one another by cutting them with a scissors, properly spacing the remaining plants to give them adequate space in order to properly grow to their determined size, whether it's beets, radishes, or carrots. By not thinning your seedlings out, you will cause the seedlings to compete with one another and produce a very low yield. This week's garden tip was brought to you by Yard Glider. The cart without wheels, loads without lifting, hauls more, dumps faster, built to last, and built for hard work. Perfect for homeowners, arborists, hunters, landscapers. Pull it behind an ATV, a lawnmower, or pull it yourself. Multiple sizes available at yardglider.com. That's yardglider.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Rinse kit. Pressurized water on the go. No pumping, no battery. Simply fill from your spigot or sink on the way out for up to five minutes of spray time. Anywhere. Live dirty. Rinse clean with Rinse Kit. Protect your plants against damage with a 3-in-1 plant guard and special blend fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. Do you know there's a real Tiger Torch? Visit TigerTorchLTD.com for more information. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. We've been using a game-changing tool called SeedLinked to find and review our seeds this year. It makes finding the right seeds simple. It is driven by growers' data so you can really see what's best for your location. Check it out at SeedLinked.com or download the mobile app today. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Blue Ribbon Organics, Naturally Green Products, Ironwood Tool Company, Easy Step Products, Rinse Kit, Soul Brew Kabucha, Wild Delight, Rycon Vitova, Chip Drop, Bailbuster.com. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. We're happy that you allow us to be part of your day and letting us uh, help your garden grow better. Well, another thing that can help your garden grow better is watering with a device called the tree diaper. 
before tree diaper, watering trees, shrubs, and bushes were not your favorite job on your property. Let's be honest. But with tree diaper, it's not really a job. Tree diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases stored rainwater when plants need it. The tree diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water and slowly releases it over three weeks. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Every time it rains, Tree Diaper recharges. Made in the USA, you can check out all the sizes available at TreeDiaper.com. That is TreeDiaper.com. Now, well, I'm going to tell a little story. Yeah, We've been gardening on the YouTube channel um, for about 10 years now. We started about 2010. And story what, time. What's that? Story time. Story time. And the problem that we ran into was we had several years there that was phenomenal. Rained every third day. Couldn't keep up with the produce coming out of it. And there was years where couldn't get rain for 12 weeks at a time, it seemed like. And we did not have a water regiment. We didn't have a schedule. And when we watered, we didn't water adequately or accurately. And uh, the plant suffered. So we're going to talk about how to water, watering correctly, getting the most out of the watering in which you're putting on your garden. And the main, and number one here is, that was the deep, dark tunnel uh, we talked about before the break. Oh, the deep, yeah, dark yeah, tunnel. About, about the tragedies of the underwatered plants <laughs> that we are. So we want to start with a watering schedule. Now, whether that be something you set up on your smartphone that you go out with a watering can or you get a device uh, such as a dripworks.com with a timer or you use the tree diaper or use the water hoop or you move your sprinklers around with a quick snap sprinkler system to water. Or yes. you get your kid, kids engaged, right. and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, it's Tuesday, we have to check the plants and water. And then they get conditioned to help you water. Well, with those tools, tree diaper, drip yeah. works, water hoop, quick snap, they can also utilize those tools in the garden as well. Uh, our water schedule is each day, when we haven't set it up yet, but during the summer months, it's three times a day. 8, noon, and 5 for 20 minutes at a time. And it's on a drip system right at the ground, so the water gets right to the, the plants, and typically most of those systems are under a mulch, uh, whether that's shredded paper, leaves, grass clippings, or straw, so that holds the moisture in. So the, so the soil has always moisture available, and the, more, and the moisture, you want it to damp sponge, which allows the nutrients to be uptaken by the plants so you have happy plants and productive plants. Right. So that's the important part. You want to water consistently, which is part of the watering schedule. And I think that a lot of people think that, oh, it rained this morning, so it should be good. And you don't know maybe how much it rained. Were you asleep when it rained? <laughs> you know what? Like you have to true, kind of think true about True enough, that. when it rains, it's, it's hydrating the soil much easier, much more effectively than if you're just standing there with a hose spraying it. But... You would be amazed if you have a raised bed and it's dry, how much water it physically takes in order to hydrate that raised bed, eight inches tall by four foot by four foot. It takes gallons upon gallons because most times when the soil is powder dry, it's hydrophobic, which means it repels water. So you have to oversaturate the soil in order for it to change, in order for it to uptake the moisture, in order to start hydrating the soil correctly and properly. Right. So that's that's what's important is you want to feel underneath that top layer for dryness. Because you water with a watering can, you're watering your Brussels sprouts, lettuce. Oh, the, the top of the soil is wet. I've put three gallons on it. Take your finger and rake. That soil, half inch below soil, the, the surface, is not moist at all. Right. And that's when something like the irrigation comes in. Right. Because you can set that up on a timer. You can set it for an hour or what have you, whatever you feel you need three times a week. And then that way you know that those plants are getting properly consistent scheduled water. You don't have to work on recharging the soil, and that's what it's called. Whenever the soil is dry and you're putting water on it, you're trying to get it to absorb so it recharges. Like it takes a while for a dry sponge to start absorbing water. Same thing with the soil. You have to get that recharged. Especially a larger dry sponge as opposed yes. to a smaller one, which brings us to thinking about containers and their size. So when you have a, a smaller dry sponge, it may pick up the moisture faster and become saturated faster, but then it also dries out faster. And that's something to think about with containers. So you want to water them once thoroughly when you see the water 
run out of the bottom, then water your group of containers, come back and water again, and then you know that is a thorough watering. If you have like uh, I don't know, one gallon or five gallon bucket size containers on your deck and you have them in full sun all day long, you may have to water twice a day because they're going to dehydrate, they're going to dry out, especially if it's the peak of the summer, end of June. Triple digits. T- triple digits, end of June through early uh, August, mid-August. You need to keep in mind you may have to water those twice a day. So you could do um, an irrigation or a timer or water them before work, after work, whatever you have to do. But a one gallon is going to dry out much, much more rapidly than a five-gallon bucket, a 30-gallon grow bag, a 60-gallon grow bag from Root Maker. Um, and the Root Maker grow bags, the unique thing about them, and you can get them at rootmaker.com, coupon code RADIO21, save 15% on your order, just to help you out there. Uh, the unique thing about them is they have a white-tempered coating on them. They're not a traditional black grow bag like you see. The reason for that white-tempered coating, one, it's it looks nice, and two, it helps repel some of that heat to get it. It, do, it doesn't absorb the heat as rapidly as a black cloth or a black grow bag would, and it makes the roots happier and healthier, and it's not burning the roots even if the soil is hydrated. Uh, you get a you know a lot of heat in wet soil, it becomes hot soil, and the plants necessarily doesn't they don't like that. Right, and that's. That's another good point is that that can be beneficial for some plants, but when you got that heat of the day, and just because it's 85 degrees outside, if you are on a deck and you have the sun just beaming on those plants or just even in your backyard, it could feel a lot warmer for them. Well, and the thing is, we'll talk about the soil in containers, soil in raised beds, soil in the ground. The healthier the soil, the 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 more it's going to hold the moisture. You know, we know clay soil holds moisture very, very well. But clay soil is not something that is good to grow in because it's hard for the roots to penetrate too. There's a lot of minerals and stuff in clay soil. That's why we try to break the clay soil up and re- and, and make it more compostable, you know, material, a potting soil type of looseness. Um, but if you have just dry, sandy soil uh, or rocky soil that, Number one, you're already against the the eight ball because you don't have the moisture cap, cap, uh, cap, uh, the possibility that the the compost or raised be- mixes have. Because right, it, it's gonna it's going to be less water um, re- retention. retention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so you want to, especially during the peak of the summer, you want to water in the early morning. Or in the later evening, and it's not because the water is going to burn the leaves, Garden with the sun, blah, blah, blah. No, um, it's because you want to be able, A, you want that water to absorb into the, the soil properly. If you do it in the middle of the day, it could dry a little bit faster. Well, and the and other then, thing is here, th- during the middle of the day, the plants are, and on the hottest day, the plants are stressed. You want to water in the morning when they're relaxed after they come off a night. A, a night time. I mean, plants don't sleep, but they do grow quite a bit at night. It, people don't realize that. And then at the evening, you water as the sun's going down, not getting it on the leaves because that can call, cause mildew. But it gives them hydration in order for them to relax and uptake that over the over the night time period. Right. So yeah, you you want to make sure you think about the proper time of watering. And then another thing is is that if you don't if you don't water properly, if you don't water consistently. You might think, oh, my plants are okay. They're still they'll, alive. They'll st- <laughs> they're still alive. Oh, you know, I, I do this every year. I water whenever I need to. Do, and- do you have a good garden every year? <laughs> or do you Just have a- asking do you- for a friend. <laughs> right, right. Or, like, could it be better? Another thing is is, is that um, when you water, when you don't water properly, a lot of those nutrients get locked up into the soil and they don't get released into your plants. And that's what causes blossom end rot on your tomatoes. It's a lack of calcium, which is a lot of people think I'm going to add eggshells or tums or something to my soil. And that's not the that's not the situation. What happens is, yeah, you may add eggshells or tums to your soil, but then if your the water, soil's still dry. The soil's still dry, but then you water them, and that's why the blossom end rot goes away because that calcium is locked up in your soil. When you water the plants, it's released back into your plants. Or when you water your soil, it's released right. back into your plants, and then... 
that takes care of the problem. And an unhydrated or dehydrated plant is much more susceptible to problems than a hydrated plant. Uh, de uh, a hydrated plant can fight off diseases, can fight off bugs much, much easier uh, and more uh, successful than a dehydrated one. You know, keep that in mind as well. So, um, water your plants, keep it on a schedule, use mulch. Mulch is a great thing. Uh, any type of mulch you can get that's natural, that's not got a chemical base like a, a weed and feed grass uh, clipping thing, uh, all natural is uh, a great thing to use to suppress weeds and hold moisture in. Well, talking about watering, with the summer being on upon us and the heat warming up, uh, it's time for you to start protecting your garden and your yard from those various beetles, weevils, and boars. Yep, those Japanese beetles will be back whether you want them or not. And what better way to prevent those pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they're larvae? Grub Gone is an easy-to-apply granular product that can be spread on your turf to successfully control grub invaders. Developed by phylum bioproducts from our natural occurring bacteria, Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT product that specifically targets only certain scarab pests. And it's safe to use around bees and other beneficial insects. And if you've already got those beetles flying around your yard, several of you probably already do, Beetle Gone is the choice. It is an organic water dispersible powder that you can spray directly on your edible plants. You can find all of this out at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P H Y L L O M bioproducts.com. Bioproducts.com. Do not go anywhere. When we come back, Jeff Bernhardt uh, will be with us, the executive gardener. You're listening to the Garden with Joey and Holly radio show. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24 7. Just dial 1 800 927 show. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1 800 927 show. Have essential oils always confused you like they did me? Take out some of the guesswork with Simply Earth. The Simply Earth Essential Oil Recipe Box will help you gain confidence and clarity in using essential oils to help make your home toxin-free. Here's how it works. You receive the recipe box with four pure essential oils, six recipe cards, and extras. Then you learn how to use your essential oils while making the recipes created by certified aromatherapists clear and concise step-by-step -step directions. Save money and detoxify your life. I got to make fun products that will detoxify my home while also learning safe ways to use my essential oils. The best part is these oils don't break my budget. Simply Earth's essential oils are 100% pure and come from the best farms from all over the world. Using essential oils to support your wellness doesn't have to be overwhelming. My home is one step closer to being toxin free because I made the wax melts and more with the Simply Earth Essential Oil Recipe Box. Visit simplyearth.com to find your recipe box and more. Deer Defeat is an all natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night, dries clear and odorless. It will not clog your sprayer. Deer Defeat works for 30 days through rain, snow, and freeze. Safe, effective, and works on rabbits. Money back guarantee. To purchase, go to DeerDefeat.com and use code RADIO to save 10% on your order. Deer Defeat, it can't be beat. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy Plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloomin'easyplants.com. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, rootmaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. Rootmaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit rootmaker.com. Use coupon code RADIO21 and get 15% off your entire order. 
Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. Soul Brew Kombucha is founded and handcrafted in Milwaukee, 100% organic, formulated for ultimate health and enjoyment. Find out the benefits of drinking kombucha and where to purchase at MySoulBrew.com or find them on Facebook at MySoulBrew. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Dripworks, Waltons Incorporated, Tree Diaper, Janie's Mill, Phylum Bioproducts, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Nature's Lawn and Garden Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Dr. Jim's, Root Maker. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Moments away, the executive gardener will be with us. But first, carpenter bees. Do you have them? You don't want them. And let's just fix the problem before they cause a problem. And with rescue, you can do that. Yeah, with the rescue carpenter bee trap stick, it works on with wasps, mud daubers, and then the carpenter bees, they bore holes and tunnels in the wood to lay eggs, and then they care for their larvae. These holes and tunnels in the wood invite mold and rot into homes, decks, fences, and any other wood structures. Spring is the best time to catch the carpenter bees before they mate, but trap stick can be used throughout the summer and early fall to control carpenter bees. Rescue makes a carpenter bee trap stick that is simply simple to use and pesticide-free. Hang trap sticks from the wood structures you want to protect. You can go to carpenterbeecontrol.com and watch a video about carpenter bees and learn how to make how to prevent them with trapstick from rescue. That's carpenterbeecontrol.com or rescue.com. Um, and they're made in the USA. Yep. The trapstick fixes your problems before the problem uh, cause before you have problems to be caused. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Jeff Bernhard is a corporate executive, but he developed a passion for gardening less than a decade ago, and he now has a YouTube channel where he teaches other people how to grow food himself. Welcome to the program, Jeff. Thanks to Joey and Holly. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Well, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to to not only enlighten Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. And, And let's start with this. You didn't get gardening until in your 40s. Not the exact um, common story of many people, but what was it that sparked that interest of gardening later on in your life? Good question, Joey. So um, yeah, I spent most of my career, like many of the listeners, uh, working their way up the corporate ladder and uh, moved three or four times um, to made some great progress. And I found myself early in the four, well, early in my 40s, maybe mid 40s, kind of very stressed out. Um, and, uh, you know, all the travel, the stress from business and my wife had a, um, what she called in air quotes, a wine dinner. And she invited a bunch of guests to turn into an intervention, but she basically said, look, you got to find something healthy you like to do. The drinking the whiskey and the motorcycle riding isn't exactly healthy. So I came up with two choices. I said, I'm going to start photography or I'm going to start gardening. And um, I started gardening, and uh, I grew up in a uh, suburb of Philadelphia. Um, Never had grown anything, quite frankly, in my life. Never had tasted a fresh tomato. And uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to start now. So uh, at that uh, very point in time, I decided to try it out, and uh, that's what started it, actually, one dinner with friends and just uh, trying to find a way to de-stress. Okay, well, that that is great. Now, you moved from Houston to Pittsburgh, and this is your first year growing in a different climate. Are you prepared for the differences? What have you learned already, and any challenges you expect to face that you are prepared for? Yeah, so I would tell you, you know, uh, so I gardened six years in Houston, and it's a very difficult place to garden in, uh, very difficult. Uh, we have high humidity, like the most rain in the United States. It's about 65 inches a year, uh, which is actually almost twice what Seattle is. And uh, it's very difficult. And the heat is, you know, as I said, is, just, is unbelievable. So the differences are that, you know, in, in Houston, you can 
for the most part, grow things year round, uh, except for, uh, you know, maybe January gets too cold, cold being 40, 45 degrees. And then uh, July and August, other than okra, watermelon, and a few other things, that's all will grow. It's just too hot. In Pittsburgh, it gets really cold. And uh, so what I've learned here is we don't have all the seasons. We basically have one season, which is from April, May, and it's still getting 37 at night. You know that. Right. Being in Wisconsin. And we have until September, October. That's it. And in the winter, pretty much anything you're going to grow is going to be inside. So to answer your question, the season is shortened, so we have to get in as much as we can. Um when you moved, when you knew you were going to Pittsburgh from Houston on a, on a personal level, was you excited because you weren't going to deal with those extraordinary heat? Uh, that, yeah. that, okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, yeah, look, anybody who's ever gone to Disney world. So if you look at Orlando, Tampa, uh, Miami, and you look at uh, Houston, Texas, San Antonio, it is hot, hot, humid, humid. And we have, you know, the blight, um, uh, the mildew. It's just, it's a very difficult time. And as you know, when you get um, uh, five inches of rain in 30 minutes, it just makes havoc on a garden. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about your YouTube channel. It's called the Executive, or the YouTube channel, the Executive Gardener. When our listeners go and check that out, what can they expect from, from you, the Executive sure. Gardener? Yeah, so I think, you know, it's a really good question. Um, and I've thought about this back and forth. And our niche really is what I would call convenience gardening. So uh, there's a lot of gardening channels that try to figure out, you know, and, and I'm not saying this disrespectfully because I think everybody's got a niche. You know, how do you garden on a budget? Some are, you know, gardening hydroponically, some are with soil. Our, our channel is really about how do you do it when you're really busy? How do you do it conven- uh, with convenience? And, you know, as you know very well, being gardeners yourself, sometimes convenience means that you have to spend a little money. And so that's what we try to do is, look, if you, you know, you don't have time to weed, you don't have time to get rid of the pests, and you got to move relatively quickly because you only have a certain amount of time because you have five kids or you have a busy job. Like, what's the most convenient way to garden? And that's what we try the garden. That's what we try to tell people is, you know, if I don't have a lot of time, what's the most efficient way to garden to get the most uh, harvest out there? And I think that's what they look for. And we also, like your channel, we try to you know, we try to uh, hit a, a a big range. So we do everything worm ca- from worm castings to hydroponics, to aquaponics, to soil gardening. But um, so I would really say in a nutshell, it's probably more convenience gardening than anything. Now, whenever you uh, made the decision to garden and made the decision to create the YouTube channel, was that the goal in mind or did that just kind of evolve over time? And you said, I think this is what will work best for me. I think it, I think um, it's what works best for me. But I also realized, Joey, that there's a lot of other people that are in my situation yeah, whether you're an executive or whether you're a busy mom, you just don't have a lot of time. But everybody loves fresh food. Everybody loves uh, the ability to de-stress and kind of get out there with Earth. So I just felt it would relate with a lot of people. And you know, I don't, I don't profess to know it all in gardening. I make more mistakes than I don't film. Uh, but but uh, you know, I, I just I feel like I bring a real approach to things and. Um, a little bit of a personality to it. And I don't take myself too seriously. And I think I get a lot of, like you do probably, I get a lot of thank you and, you know, just quick tips and, and try to teach people the most efficient way to garden, to get a crop for themselves. when they just don't have a lot of time. No, most definitely. So your wife helps prepare a lot of the food from the garden. Is there any dish she makes that's a favorite that our listeners should try, or maybe something you have on your channel? Yeah, so we're, you know, it's interesting. We, uh, so we just built a, a brand new house in Pittsburgh and the garden, unfortunately, was on a hiatus for about uh, a year, year and a half. Um, because, you know, we're, we were living in an apartment while the house was being built and with COVID supplies were delayed. So most people with new homes, uh, were delayed severely. So we're really starting to uh, ramp out this year. And so my wife is a, a nutritionist and a certified diabetes educator and uh, and also a great cook. So what we thought was really important was 
uh, not just to grow the food, because if any of the listeners have grown Swiss chard as an example, it's not exactly delicious to eat. You can't really digest it unless you know how to cook it uh, with oil and seasoning and all that. So what we try to do is, uh, you know, do both of those and try to figure out a way uh, to cook anything from the garden and make it taste really good. And that's what she is. So she'll uh, eventually here uh, in the upcoming season, we'll start from um, the side of the yard where it's uh, grown and then it'll go to uh, the cooking pan and to the plate and we will take people uh, through each part of the way and how you prepare it and how you make it taste good and what the nutritional value is calories and all that for people that are, that are looking to count those type of things. Um, to answer your question, uh, no question. I think I like when she does the, um, uh, the bu- buffalo uh, uh, mozzarella with uh, um, the caprese salad, I guess I would say, with the tomatoes. She drizzles uh, oil and vinegar over it and, and our fresh basil. So we make the tomatoes fresh. We make the basil fresh. Obviously, we don't make the mozzarella, <laughs> uh, but uh, she does it really well. But, you know, I think the best is yet to come, and that's really what we're looking to separate our channel with is not just the cooking, or excuse me, the growing of the food, which can be very difficult, but also how do you prepare it and how do you do it in a nutritional way that is healthy um, for, for, for listeners. So that'll, that'll really launch, I would say, in the next two to four months, and uh, I'm really excited about it because – Again, there's a lot of things you can grow in the garden that don't taste exactly great unless you prepare it right. I definitely agree. So now when you were a newer gardener, I wouldn't say you're quite still a new gardener, but now you are a new gardener in a different area. Um, What are some ways you stay motivated if you came upon a challenge and stay motivated enough to overcome that challenge? Yeah, so look, it's you know, there's so many parallels in life with business for for business and – you know, whatever business you're in or whatever phase of life you're in, man, you always hit challenges, you always hit roadblocks, you have to overcome obstacles. And that's no different in gardening, right, guys? Right. Uh, I mean, you know, we get aphids, we get, um, you know, we don't harden, we don't we'll forget about our plants we're trying to harden off and they fail. Um, I tried growing up uh, shiitake mushrooms, it uh, got mold. I mean, it's just like, One thing after another, what you really, this is what I come to appreciate. So I come to appreciate that rejection is a part of life, failure is a part of life, and we're all a student in life. So what you learn in the growing process, just like you do in business, you're better next time. And many times, like you all do, I show the fails, I show show how I mess up, but you don't make the same the same mistake twice or, or, or three times. And what I love about the YouTube gardening channel is that if I have an issue and a problem, I can uh, uh, type it in search in YouTube and someone has already covered it. So I'm not the only one that's had these problems, but, you know, failure and overcoming failure is a part of life. And um, that's what keeps me motivated, uh, motivated to keep learning and doing better. And uh, trying to perfect, I don't know if there's ever such a thing, but perfect my gardening skills. Well, Jeff, we greatly appreciate the the time you've graciously offered us. How can our listeners find out more about you, find your YouTube channel, and uh, watch your videos? Yeah, so I would just type in uh, The Executive Gardener on YouTube, and you will certainly find me. We... It's been a little bit slow this past year, so I apologize as we come into a new house. But as you know, being in Wisconsin and me being in Pittsburgh, uh, it's still 38 at night. So I expect uh, in the next few weeks us to start coming above that freeze point and uh, growing a lot of stuff. We are going to be doing our yard here soon, some raised beds. And things will be ramping up with the uh, how to cook the food. So, again, just go to... Uh, either Google or YouTube, type in the Executive Garden, and you'll find me. Well, Jeff, we thank you for the time you've given us and and the information you've shared with Holly and myself and all of our listeners. Thank you, and I I, I do enjoy both of your show as well, so keep up the good work, and thanks for the time. Well, thank Thank you. Thank you. And when we come back, it's going to be your garden questions, our garden answers. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Straight from the farm, fields, and briar patch, Piper and Leaf Artisan Tea is a tea like you've never imagined it. 
Get our award-winning tea delivered right to your front door and become part of the Piper and Leaf family. Free shipping over $75 at piperandleaf.com. The Water Hoop is a portable water sprinkler system that allows you to target water evenly around the root ball of your tree or bush. Conforms to various shapes for your watering needs. The Water Hoop reduces runoff and saves money. Visit waterhoop.com. Gardening is the number one hobby and birding is the number two hobby nationwide. They go hand in hand. Birds help gardens grow by eating bad bugs. Reward them with Wild Delights premium quality mixes. Wild Delights premium mixes are made with tasty nuts and berries and not just filler food like milo and cracked corn. Feed the birds the nutrition they need. This keeps your feathered friends coming back year after year for your visual delight and for the happiness of your garden. Keep your feeders full all year round with Wild Delight premium bird food. Find out more at wilddelight.com. How would you like to be able to fertilize, aerate, and dethatch your lawn using just one product and at the same time improve the soil and root development? Introducing Lawn Force 5, a five-way lawn care kit in a bottle. Lawn Force 5 gives you a lush and healthy lawn you can be proud of. And it takes away the expense of hard work that comes with mechanically aerating and dethatching the lawn. Visit our friends at natureslawn.com to find out more about the amazing Lawn Force 5 product. That's natureslawn.com. Use discount code GARDEN-TALK for 10% off your order. Chapin has the tools to help you this season. We have a wide range of sprayers to help you control pests, weeds, and fertilize your plants. From handheld to ATV sprayers, we have it all. Use our broadcast spreader to feed and seed your green spaces. Water and feed at the same time with our fertilizer injectors. Find Chapin equipment at major home improvement and hardware stores and online at ChapinMFG.com. Chapin, cover more ground. Seed Savers Exchange has been saving, preserving, and sharing heirloom seeds since 1975, and today continues to provide those seeds for gardeners just like you. They have over 600 varieties. Visit seedsavers.org to request a free catalog or to purchase seeds online for this year's growing season. That's seedsavers.org. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at dripworks.com. You move your lawn sprinklers all over the yard, but you always end up putting them in the same spots. Why not just bury them there? Out of sight, always ready to use, pre-adjusted to water the precise areas you want. Quick snap sprinklers makes it easy in-ground sprinklers without the hassle or expense of laying pipe put the sprinklers anywhere in your lawn or garden snap on a hose to supply the water water on it pops up water off it drops below ground you can mow right over it you can have a buried sprinkler system up and running in just minutes each quick snap saves thousands of dollars they install in minutes and operate for years visit quicksnapsprinkler.com the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Simply Earth, Seed Savers Exchange, Quick Snap Sprinklers, Water Hoop, Timber Pro Coatings, Bloom and Easy Plants, Pomona Universal Pectin, Ivy Organics, Tiger Torch, Happy Leaf LED, Seed Link. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. <laughs> Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Your questions are answers. It's that time of the show. You want to submit your question, you can do it by giving us a call. 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-SHOW. Or if you'd much rather submit it via electronic mail, you can do that. Emailing us at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Electronic mail, that's what it's called, Holly. I know that's what it's called. I just don't... I don't. You didn't think, think this country boy knew what electronic <laughs> mail was, huh? I just haven't heard anybody say that for uh, okay. a long, long time. Uh, gardentalkradio at gmail.com is that electronic mail address. <laughs> uh, we got a number of questions to come in. We'll see how many we can make it through to the top of the hour. Holly, let's start with this one. Uh, what crops grow good in very rocky soil? Well, there's a number of crops, which you're in luck for. Um, herbs, herbs like rocky soil, and also... Now, we're not shall- talking shallots. like a rock road here, but we, we've experienced rocky soil in our garden. I think shallots like rocky soil, too, if I remember right. They don't... Yeah, I mean, because they kind of grow above. They don't actually yeah. grow in. Yeah, so yeah. shallots you could get with, too. Uh, butterfly weed, coneflower, um, oxeye daisy, verbena rose, 
Black-eyed Susan, succulent plants. Oh, yeah, I think I knew that about the succulents. Small trees and shrubs. Most vegetables do fine in rocky soil with the exception of root crops. So um, you can do tomatoes, uh, peppers, all that stuff. But you may, um, if your soil is rocky, you may want to consider adding some compost to it. That would be a good idea if you're going to be growing it for a while. All right, so that should help you out there. Uh, let's see here. Planting shallots. I missed the opportunity to plant them last fall. Do they have to be planted in the fall, or can they be planted in the spring? Do they need that cold hour, cold hours, or are they fine right now if I put them in the ground? Yeah, you can plant them right now. You can plant them as soon as the soil can be worked. We put our shallots in a month ago? Yeah. I don't know. It seems like forever ago. So, yeah, as soon as the soil can be worked, you can plant them. So spring planting is fine. Um, so Amy writes, I have pole beans that I left in the trellis last year. They drive, dried, but I never brought them indoors. Are they good? Can I plant them? Yeah, you can plant them. Go ahead and take them. If Okay, here. If they were dried on the actual trellis or on the plant, for that matter, they're still in the, sh in the shell, in the casing, um, and they... And they look healthy. They're not plumped up or you know bulked up, swelled up. Go ahead and put them in the ground. They they you know in nature you know they will fall. Tomatoes do this. They fall. They set there. They overwinter and they grow. So go ahead and use them. Yep. Um, so another question is: I have a neighbor down the street that has horses. Has a sign up front that says "free horse manure," and I've been tempted to pick it up and put the horse manure in my garden, but I'm not sure if I can use it fresh or I have to wait a couple of years for it to age. All, um, what should I do? Also, there is there a difference between horse manure and cow manure? Uh, horse manure, cow manure, uh, both will burn your garden uh, and your plants if it is not properly broke down. <clears throat> uh, you need to allow it to age. Well-aged manure, um, allow it to overwinter. Or if you can put it in a pile and it'll take a couple of months, it takes about three or four months in order to break down to a compostable form, which you can use on your garden and feed your plants. However, now, you want to be careful and know what the horses or, in other instances, cows were fed in the grass realm because there are persistent herbicides that farmers use that when, going, when the cow eats the grass, it kills everything but the grass, so they bail up the grass, feed it to the horse or cow, the, they process it, the animal kicks it out the back end, it turns into manure, you pick it up, you turn it into compost. That herbicide is so persistent that it's still active and it will kill or greatly damage your uh, broadleaf plants, your peppers, your eggplants, your potatoes, your tomatoes, and it can take many, many years to remitigate the soil by natural means uh, in order to detoxify basically the soil in which you're growing in uh, if you want to learn more about this you can go to growing a greener world or just type in killer compost in your search engine joe lample has this all he's documented this in an episode he did this so we're warning you because it can can happen right all right ollie is kelp or seaweed good for the garden well, first of all, seaweed collection for personal use in small quantities does not require a license. You do want to check your area. Yeah, yeah. In most places. <laughs> or do it at night. Or do it at night. Yeah. Yeah. You, um, did, you didn't hear that from us. Or on a cold day yeah. where there might not be any people around. Um, but you can put kelp or seaweed into a bucket or a large glass container, jar, what have you. Fill it with water. You leave this in the sun covered for a few days and you make this seaweed tea and it's a great foliar spray to deter insect pests or you can apply directly to the soil and around the seedlings. Seaweed contains useful amounts of iodine, copper, iron, potassium, manganese, phosphorus, and zinc. If you are concerned about salt, seaweed can be spread out over the driveway and rinsed with a hose. Uh, we have copper in there, which raised beds is treated with copper, so it is an element. So a lot of people, a lot of controversy, should I have raised beds treated or untreated? If you don't want it treated, uh, get pine, use Timber Pro Coatings UV uh, internal wood stabilizer. Uh, if it's treated, it you know very little leaching, if anything, will happen. So with that, we are out of time, and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of the show today and want to revisit it? You can do that by going to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and clicking on the radio tab, Season 5 tab at the top of the page. Or you can send us an email at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com, and we will send you a link to this program today. Well, do not miss next week's show. We will be talking about edible flowers 
as well as bug control and what you need to do to make your plants healthy and protected. Our guest will be new author Susan Mulville, and we'll answer your garden questions. So until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. <laughs> <laughs>